A recent scientific paper has suggested that Homo erectus was in fact the first Homo sapiens. Indeed, a new species, what is being called Homo sapiens erectus, is throwing a huge wrench in the works of human evolution. Lately, the out-of-Africa hypothesis has become disputed, and a new hypothesis has been proposed, the out-of-Eurasia hypothesis. In a recent paper, titled The Reversal of Human Phylogeny, Humans Left Africa as Erectus, Came Back as Sapiens Sapiens, the authors outline their new theory, while debunking the out-of-Africa hypothesis. The authors show that Homo sapiens evolved from Homo erectus, after Erectus left Africa around 2 million years ago. The study used phylogenetics to calculate that Homo sapiens originated in South Central Asia, in the region of Western India. And due to recurrent ice ages causing population bottlenecks, several different lineages evolved, including Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo antecessor. The study considers all these groups to be subspecies of Homo sapiens, rather than separate species, as has been traditionally used. In this model, Homo sapiens evolved almost 1 million years ago, then split into these several lineages around 600 to 800,000 years ago. For most of the 20th century, much of the Western academic world believed in the out-of-Africa theory of human evolution. The theory proposes that hominids evolved in Africa, until the emergence of Homo erectus. About 2 million years ago Homo erectus left Africa and spread throughout Europe and Asia. In Europe, Homo erectus evolved into the Neanderthals, while in Asia most Homo erectus stopped evolving. As regards to the morphological distinction between sapiens and erectus, the authors of the study recognized them as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens erectus, in accordance with their overlapping morphology. Genetic testing of Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA has found that they contributed to the genome of all humans outside of Africa. This demonstrated that Neanderthals were not a unique species and could breed with Homo sapiens, supporting this phylogeny. According to Out of Africa, most Asian Homo erectus stopped evolving, with the exception of a small group in the Indonesian archipelago that branched off to become Homo floresiensis. Unlike most of the Homo erectus in Asian environments, which stagnated, the Homo erectus that stayed in Africa continued to evolve and eventually became Homo sapiens. Then, about 100,000 years ago, modern Homo sapiens left Africa. They spread throughout the globe and conquered or outcompeted Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo erectus. The last Neanderthal died out around 30,000 years ago, somewhere in Europe. In the study of human evolution, Australia has not traditionally been believed to have much to offer. Nonetheless, the skeletal record of Australia has thrown a few wrenches in the works that may one day transform beliefs about where humans came from. However, Australia has a significant number of fossils and archaic DNA, such as the Cow Swamp and Mungo Lake fossils, that have potential to illuminate the human evolutionary story. Sadly, the interpretations of these finds are being stunted by the adherence to the out-of-Africa model. According to traditional migration theories, Homo erectus or any other archaic human never reached Australia and was believed to have died out before Homo sapiens reached Indonesia in excess of 100,000 years ago. The last Homo erectus died out somewhere between 100,000 and 50,000 years ago on Java. The last hobbit is believed to have died out in a volcanic eruption around 10,000 years ago. After conquering Homo erectus in Indonesia, Homo sapiens moved to Australia. If Homo erectus had made it to Australia first, then they too would have been conquered by modern man. Ice Age Eurasia was just too inhospitable for nomadic Homo erectus, so they let Neanderthals and Denisovans occupy those habitats. In the Indonesian archipelago, the ancestor of the hobbit may have been cut off from migration routes due to changes in sea levels or volcanic activity. Consequently, they also become a unique species, called Homo floresiensis. Sea levels during the reoccurring ice ages were up to 300 feet lower than today, exposing a vast landmass, known as Sunderland, in the region of Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Gulf of Thailand. Java would have been at the edge of this landmass, and the furthest point to be connected to mainland Asia. If out of Africa is to be believed, then human occupation of Australia has to be less than 75,000 years. 
exactly when humans arrived would have been determined by how long it took Homo sapiens emerging from Africa to conquer the Homo erectus tribe spread throughout Asia. But under the out of Eurasia hypothesis, the length of human occupation of Australia can be greatly extended. In fact Homo erectus was known to be in the Indonesian archipelago a million years ago. If they had made the crossing to Australia, then hominin occupation of Australia could be anywhere up to 850,000 years. It is generally believed that Homo erectus was not intelligent enough to make the boats that would have been required to cross to Australia. Arguably though, making a raft or a canoe is much easier than making stone tools that can kill large, dangerous megafauna. Furthermore, Homo erectus obviously had a degree of intelligence, as it had crossed large rivers, and adapted to diverse climates on its way from Africa to Europe, Indonesia and China. Homo erectus is also credited with building shelters, up to 50 feet in length, throughout Europe and Asia, so they definitely had the intelligence to build a raft. The only question is whether they were crazy enough to use it to cross open oceans. It should also be noted that the hobbit was found on the Australian Papua New Guinea side of the Wallace Line. In previous ice ages, Papua New Guinea was part of the Australian zoological regions, and Flores showed signs of both Asian and Australian fauna. The Wallace Line is a stretch of deep water that separates the zoological regions of Asia from those of Australia and Papua New Guinea. Remarkably, 840,000-year-old Homo erectus tools have been found on the Australian New Guinea side, but they are associated with the Hobbit. It should also be noted that New Guinea, Australia, and Tasmania become one land mass during low ice age sea levels, known as Sahul. If these stone tools on the island of Flores are attributed to Homo erectus, that proves that Homo erectus was capable of making the sea crossing. It also proves that after crossing the Wallace Line, Homo erectus had the opportunity to migrate into Australia. Indeed, recent evidence shows ancient humans made it all the way to the Philippines by around 700,000 years ago, where they butchered a pygmy rhinoceros. But at some stage in the last 850,000 years, did Homo erectus make the crossing from Java to Australia? Now, let's go on a hunt for Homo erectus. Recent dating evidence shows that Erectus survived on the Indonesian island of Java, long after it had vanished elsewhere. This means it was still around when our own species was walking the Earth, and represents the most recent known record of Homo erectus anywhere in the world. In the 1930s, 12 Homo erectus skull caps and two lower leg bones were found in a bone bed 50 feet above the Solo River, at Ngandong in central Java. In subsequent decades, researchers have attempted to date the fossils. But this proved difficult because the surrounding geology is complex, and details of the original excavations became confused. Many researchers think the collection of remains represent a mass death event, possibly the result of a lahar. A lahar, which comes from a Javanese word, is the slurry of mud that can flow down the slope of a volcano, when heavy rainfall occurs during or after a volcanic eruption. These violent events will sweep away anything in their path. But the original archaeologists believed the skulls to be headhunters' trophies, due to the large number found in one place, and the fact that headhunters in Borneo and New Guinea were around until modern times. In the 1990s, one scientific team came up with unexpectedly young ages of between 53,000 and 27,000 years ago. This raised the distinct possibility that modern humans overlapped with Homo erectus on the Indonesian island. In fact, modern humans have been found on Sumatra, dating to just after the Toba eruption 74,000 years ago. Logically, we can guess that any evidence of humans from just before the time of the eruption, the largest in the least 2 million years, was obliterated. Regarding the study, Professor Chris Stringer, head of human evolution research at London's Natural History Museum, commented, quote, This is a very comprehensive study of the depositional context of the famous Java Homo erectus skulls, and the study authors build a strong case that these individuals died, and were washed into the deposits of the Solo River. This age is very young for such primitive-looking Homo erectus fossils, and establishes that the species persisted on Java for well over one million years, unquote. On other islands in Southeast Asia, Homo erectus appears to have evolved into smaller forms, such as Homo floresiensis on Flores, and Homo luzonensis in the Philippines. This probably occurred because there were limited food resources on these islands. 
but on Java, there appears to have been enough food for Erectus to maintain its original body and brain size. The specimens on Java appear to be between 5 feet and 6 feet in height, comparable to examples from Africa and elsewhere in Eurasia. But why did Homo erectus survive so late on Java? In Africa, the species was probably gone by 500,000 years ago, and in Eurasia it vanished some 400,000 years ago. They were probably outcompeted by other human species elsewhere, but Java's location allowed it to thrive in relative isolation. Homo erectus had nearly double the brain size of any previous hominin, were superb hunters, traveled throughout the old world, and sailed to ocean islands, and somewhere along the way they got language. Evidence that erectus had language comes from their settlements, their art, their symbols, their intellectual ability and their tools. Erectus settlements are found throughout most of the old world. And, most importantly for the idea that erectus had language, open oceans were not barriers to their travel. Moreover, sailing demonstrates a level of cognitive development, rivaling even that of modern humans. The erectus accomplishment of paddling across one of the strongest ocean currents in the world, such as around Island of Flores in Indonesia, required not only cooperation, but also corrections, instructions and commands. Few detailed instructions or corrections can be given without language. Given these variables, purposeful seafaring, involving intentionally constructed craft, capable of carrying relatively large payloads over considerable distances, is a more plausible model, in light of the increasing global evidence of early humans on many islands. To build and operate boats, erectors needed to talk about what material to collect, where to collect it, how to put the material together, and so on. In addition to the assembly of a raft, the planning for the trip as a whole, and the reasoning for the undertaking, would have all required language. Researchers tracked down the descendants of the Dutch researchers who excavated the Homo erectus remains back in the 1930s. The relatives were able to provide them with photographs of the original dig, maps and notebooks. They were able to resolve much of the uncertainty that had hampered previous attempts to understand the site. Archaeologists excavated part of an untouched reserve area left alone by the Dutch team in the 1930s. Informed by records of the original excavations, the team was able to identify the gravelly deposit, or bone bed, from which the Homo erectus fossils had come from and dated. The researchers opened up excavations on the terraces beside the Solo River, reanalyzing the site and its surroundings. In this study, they have provided what they describe as a definitive age for the bone bed, of between 117,000 and 108,000 years old. This is older than the dates of 27,000 to 53,000 years in the other study, but still much younger than original estimates. However, Professor Chris Stringer sounded a note of caution, regarding the final disappearance of Homo erectus. He said, quote, The authors claim that this is therefore the last known occurrence of the species, and that this indicates there was no overlap of the species with Homo sapiens in Java, as Homo sapiens arrived much later. I'm not convinced about that, as other supposedly late Homo erectus material from Javanese sites, like Sambung Macon remain to be properly dated, and they may be younger still, unquote. In an email to this channel, he followed up this statement by saying, quote, Unfortunately, work suggesting that the Sambung Macon fossils might be younger than those from Gandong is still unpublished, so I can't say anything more about that at the moment. In my view, there is still potential for a chronological overlap, as there is nothing to indicate that the Gandong individuals were the last of their species, unquote. The story of human evolution used to be a simple and lonely tale of one species living at one time, and evolving gradually into another species. This evolution took place in Africa, and eventually modern humans, the Homo sapiens, finally emerged from Africa. Indeed, we used to think of human evolution as a progression, with a straight line, leading from apes to Homo sapiens. This is embodied in the so-called March of Progress illustration, where a stooping chimp-like creature gradually morphs into Homo sapiens, the apex of evolution. These days, however, we know things were far more complicated. This story highlights a mind-boggling truth, that many of the species we thought of as transitional stages, in this onward march, overlapped with each other, in some cases for hundreds of thousands of years. The out-of-Africa theory, therefore, needs to be revised and rewritten.